Hey, Adam here. One of my favorite fish to eat is walleye. And gosh, not just because they taste so good, but because they're freshwater fish with nice fillets. I mean, I like eating bluegill. I like eating perch. Um, I like eating, you know, catfish. But there's something about a walleye fillet when you fry it up. Here is a recent walleye catch and cook that I did so tasty and I only live a couple hours away from Lake Erie so there's tens of millions of walleye in Lake Erie but the thing is you have to be able to catch them so the first few times I went up there I went out with a charter captain Captain Dave who's semi-retired now and when you fish for walleye you can basically do one of two things you can drift cast or you can troll and if you're going to troll, then you've got to know how far the line's got to be out, what weight's got to be on the line, how deep, how fast you need to go, what color of the lures. And it's a lot of work. And then when the bite happens, you don't even get to feel it because the rod's sitting in rod holders. And then you've got to pick it up and reel it in. Now, you still get your fish. And usually you can catch your limit of six pretty quickly. But to me, that's not fishing. Drift casting is the only way to catch walleye. It's very sporting. And... You need to have a harness to be able to do that. Now, one of the most popular ways if you don't have a harness is an Erie Deary. But these suckers are $6 a pop. And they come in a bunch of different colors. And you can try different things. But, man, at $6 a pop, I wanted something a lot more economical. And that rig that Captain Dave used for us all those years, that thing is the bomb. And so I'm going to show you how to make something very similar to that. You're going to love it. And not only will it catch walleye on Lake Erie, but you can use this in any reservoir or pond where you live. This thing gets attention. I catch fish with it all over the place. Check it out. Okay, first thing that you're going to want to do is assemble all of the components that you'll need to put this together. So I'm going to run through each of them. The most expensive one is still only a couple of dollars. Once you start making them, your cost per harness is going to be dirt cheap. This is $6 for one Erie Deary, and then this is going to end up being pennies, uh, maybe a couple quarters for each of the ones that you're going to make. So first thing is you need a monofilament line. This helps with uh, protecting against the bite of the walleye on it. Um, very good durable line. I have 15 pound test here. You can go up to 30 pound test. The clearer the water is, um, the more they're going to be able to see this thick line. So I'll use 15 pound for this. I do have some 20 pound test ones also. Um, what line you want to use um, is going to be dependent on what size weight you're going to throw primarily for me. I use 8 pound fluorocarbon on my main line and then I run half ounce to one ounce sinkers depending on how fast I want it to go through the water. How, how low in the water column do I want it to be. If I'm slow reeling it back in, I can use a lighter weight and keep it low. If I'm fast reeling it, I need a heavier weight. Most of the walleye you catch in here are going to be between 15 and 35 feet deep. So this half ounce, three quarters, five eighths, one ounce, th this is all, these are all going to be great weights to put on the line above your rig, Carolina style, uh, with a bead after this. Very first thing on your rig is going to be barrel swivels. Who cares what version you get? It doesn't matter. You can go get fancy roller bearing ones or you can get little cheapy ones like this. This is a dozen for like a dollar at Walmart barrel swivels. These work great for me. If your line's starting to get tangled, the way you cast or the way you fish, get the ball bearing ones, but these always work great for me. Next, you're going to need beads. Um, there's a million different bead colors. I actually prefer red, orange, and purple um, for Lake Erie for walleye. Those are really great colors. But gold and chrome always add a nice ac accentuation to it. Um, they're, red sometimes are hard to get a hold of, and orange in stores a lot of times are sold out. You may have to go online to get those, but you get like 100 of these for a dollar. Um, the next thing you're going to need are clevises. So this is what attaches your blade to your line. These white ones are interchangeable. And then you see a couple gold ones in there. Those are not interchangeable um, blades once your line is made. Colorado blade, number four. That's what you want, gold. 
uh, for Lake Erie, this is the best. This is the best blade to have. I do have some copper blades. Um, they just don't work as well at Lake Erie. And size four, for whatever reason, seems to be really good. I if I if the water's a little dirtier and I need to move more, maybe I'll jump up to a five. Uh, but again, staying in the gold color. I just haven't had a lot of luck with with copper up at Erie. You can get colored blades too and experiment with that if you'd like to. The Erie Deeries all come with different uh, colored blades, glitter and purple and red and like red chrome fade. But yeah, I've found a lot of success. Caught a lot of walleye on the gold. Next is you're gonna need a hook and there's a bunch of different hooks that you can use. This is my favorite one um, right now because it is so, so sharp and you want that really sharp um, hook walleye you want it to be able to set sometimes they do a very light bite and if you've got a nice hook now you can see i have a bait holder in here too that i took off my line so i um, and stuck it back in here but this zone lock a uh, couple bucks you can get 10 of these one odd or two odd uh, depending on what you um, what you want this is just this is probably my favorite hook right now there's also this hook, which is a rotating worm hook um, or slow death rig. It spins slowly in the water as you retrieve it, which is very enticing for the walleye. I've used this in, in Michigan to, to land walleye, and it's a great hook. But when the worm starts to get old, it'll slide down the hook, and it'll just be like this bunch of you at the end, and the walleye don't really like that. They like it when it stays up on the hook. So if you're changing your worm a lot, this is a good hook to use. Um, you can get this in the, in the big version, or I've also used it in the small version. And if you're like, hey, I don't have either of those, yeah, just go with a straight-up Aberdeen. Now, this size 2 is probably as small as I would go for walleye, because uh, you need their mouth to be able to get around the shank. And uh, But I've caught on smaller. I've caught on size 4, size 6 uh, hooks with walleye. But anyway, that's, that's all you need to actually create the rig. So let's go ahead and build one. I always use painter's tape or a rubber band to hold this in, in place. You're going to want to do about a 2 to 3 foot liter. And so pull off about that much line. Um, very first thing you're going to want to do is put your swivel on. Now I use the improved clinch knot. You can use whatever knot you prefer. Um, they actually have the improved clinch knot on here. You can see it on the package. Now tying a swivel with a, um, with a bearing in it uh, can be fun sometimes. All right, so the swivel's tied on. Make sure it's cinched down, and then you can cut that. You can cut the other end of your two and two to three foot line. And then you're going to want to put some beads on. So I don't have any orange beads, but I like these purple ones. I would say anywhere between six and eight beads are good. Um... They clack together, they, they get the walleye's attention. Um, you know, the color combination, sometimes I'll throw a silver in the middle of it. So put a couple beads on first, and then you're gonna wanna put your clevis on. Now I have a quick release, a quick change clevis here with a blade already on it. So you're going to want that to sit up on the line like this. So this is going to be the top end of your line that goes up to the swivel and then this one's going to be the one that goes down to the hook. So I have the swivel tied on already. I'm going to put that on next and then I'm going to put some more beads on just after that. Let's throw a gold one on here. Okay, so now your rig should look like this. You have your swivel, a few beads, your clevis with your blade, a couple beads, 
And then the last thing you're going to do is you're going to put your hook on. Now I'm going to put this uh, slow death rig, this rotating hook on. Again, I use a improved clinch knot, but you can use a palomer, double palomer. You can snell tie it if your if your hook um, is good that way. You just don't want it to be bent off to the side when you get done. So there we have it tied on. Yeah, I know it's not the prettiest knot, but it works. That is what is going to be going through the water. Now I usually take about two to three inches of the worm, um, feed it all the way up as far as it'll go and let an inch hang off the end. And then this thing, that blade will just spin in the water, shining you know, light all over the place, turning the water, making noise, beads are clacking. This hook spinning, the worm's tail's just dangling off, and man, it is a winner. Now, when you've got something that's two, three feet long, you can't just stick this in a tackle box because it'll get all tangled. That's where the magic swim noodle comes in. So go buy a six foot, five foot swim noodle from Walmart for a few dollars. Um, this is what all the charter captains have. And then you can just wrap, start with a swivel, Make sure that fishing line crosses it to hold it in place. And then you just take your hook and jam it in the swim noodle. And then when you get up to Lake Erie and you maybe you lose a fish or it gets caught on zebra mussels, you can just pull off another one. Maybe you want to try a different color. You see I have silver and chartreuse here. I've got purple and gold. I've got silver beads. So that's all ready. Yeah, so that's all you need to create a bunch of rigs, walleye rigs for Lake Erie. These are also great for catching sawguy. Um, State of Ohio, DNR makes a lot of sawguy, which is a mix between sauger and walleye. Um, they also like this rig. Um, you can use it to catch catfish. I've caught pumpkin seed. I've caught a bunch of different species on this uh, in the reservoirs near me. But this is a great walleye rig. I've never gone out and not caught walleye with this rig, it's just an excellent setup. Just drift, put your drift sock out if it's windy, uh, go you know half a mile an hour, one mile an hour across and, and you're catching walleye. This rig always wins.